Okay. Uh, welcome, everyone. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, thanks for joining the webinar. Uh, this will be Strategic Communication, Telling the Story of WAP in 2017. Uh, my name is Eric Bano with NASCAS. I'm the Program and Policy Analyst here. Um, so we really wanted to have this webinar to have uh, everyone thinking about how to strategically communicate um, about WAP and weatherization uh, in 2017. So, um, welcome everyone. Uh, hey Judy, our Energy Service Director, will also be on the line. Uh, and we have a couple communication folks from DOE who I think have joined in. And then everyone else should be uh, uh, all state folks, so your colleagues from all of the state weatherization offices. Um, we'll go ahead and get started. So, an overview of what we're going to cover. Um, you know, some frank messaging, uh, and then we'll do a little bit of a focus on the economic impact of WAP. Um, we will talk about success stories, what it make, what makes a good success story, how to build those, and then just some other general communications tips, um, some stuff on social media, photos, infographics. So um, there's lots to cover in the in the of the hour, but um, I do want to leave about 10-ish uh, minutes at the end for questions. Um, I'll pause periodically after uh, kind of each of these sections, and, and we can have some, some discussion of there's questions. Also, at any time, if you want to uh, type out a question through the, the Q&A, um, I can see those as well, and I'll address them as we go along. Um, so we'll get started. Kind of just uh, some background. I know uh, some of you might be feeling a little overwhelmed uh, in the current landscape, um, especially on the creation front. It's uh, you know a time of change. There are a lot of messages you hear, um, you know, coming across in the news, on social media, um, from your local agencies, uh, from other people at your state, and um, we wanted to make sure that you had the uh, resources and you felt prepared to uh, talk about WAP and and in terms of security communication. Um, so, this, this webinar, make sure that you leave the webinar with a better understanding of how to communicate in WAP, around WAP during the current landscape, uh, some hands on tools and knowledge to craft effective success stories. And then, you know, kind of having a full picture of how NASCAS can be a communications resource to you going forward. Um, you know, NASCAS uh, hasn't done a webinar like this in a while. Uh, we had done some some really good material on this, uh, you know, back in the Recovery Act when there was a lot of focus on the program from from kind of all areas, and we want to make sure that you felt prepared, um, kind of in this new uh, a new kind of time and and so that you have something to focus your efforts on, something you can share with local agencies. And, you know, we understand that some state offices are limited in what they can do um, with communications. So, um, but, you know, even if you're working with more of a marketing department, you're working with uh, local agencies, we want to make sure that you have those, those tools and resources. So, uh, those are the strategic goals. Um, of the webinar. Um, so first up, we're going to talk about um, framing and messaging. So, so the WAP's communication strengths to start off. Um, WAP is a it has features just inherently that make it a strong program and a good program to um, have to to do public information and relations around. So, uh, you know, first of all, you can see there the mission statement from the legislation back in 1976 when the program was created. Um, you know, it's a very clear mission. There's no ambiguity ambiguity about the intent of the program. Um, you know, it's a very noble mission, and that's something that we should use uh, to our advantage. Um, actually, I just have a couple of other bullet points there um, highlighting some strengths of WAP that you know, some other programs don't have. Um, that we're fortunate to you know, be able to, to have to manage and focus on. Um, you know, app has a very measurable impact. You guys see the results of it in your states every day. 
you know, a multidimensional program. Uh, it's more than just energy. Um, you know, and we have a 40-year history, but we also have some some cutting-edge technology and standards. Um, and of course, the, the dedicated people running the program every day. And, and I'm going to go a little bit more in depth into all of these. Um, kind of looking at uh, the table we have here, uh, a then versus now. Um, there's different themes and different emphasis. Um, of the program that have been highlighted at different times. So uh, kind of what we've been used to the past several years um, in the then column, and I want to be clear, the, the last the then column is not bad or forbidden or anything like that, but um, to the right, the now is kind of a, a different way of framing and focusing aspects of WAP. That would be, um, you know, more relevant, more useful to us during this uh, time period. So. Um, you know, protecting the environment, WAP definitely has a strong role in, in the environment and cutting down on pollution, um, but probably a stronger frame would be impact on health and safety, um, you know, on indoor air quality, things of that nature, and we'll go into that in more depth later on. Um, you know, also conserving energy, energy is the use is the bread and butter of the program, um, but, you know, maybe it makes more sense to say reducing energy waste, optimum energy. Um, so energy efficiency improvements, retrofits, uh, it also might make sense to think of it more as energy infrastructure and modernizing that infrastructure. Um, and while we know from that uh, mission statement, WAP is a program helping low-income Americans, um, both thinking about creating opportunity um, for vulnerable communities. So uh, just to orient yourself and, and think about WAP in in uh, some, some different terms. Okay. Think about health and safety benefits. So you can see here um, we have all the statistics on how weatherization uh, makes residents of weatherized homes more happy, um, safer in their homes. They can breathe easier. It's not just that uh, you're staying warm in the winter, but, but there are significant health benefits, and then those truly translate to economic benefits in the terms of health care cost savings. So um, there's a lot of good research out about that right now that you can use in uh, your communications efforts. Uh, you know, very notably, the WAB National Evaluation has a lot of this information. Uh, there's other groups in the healthy housing world that have, have put out different papers and, and reports, um, a couple of them here. Uh, you know, a lot of this data you kind of have in your state, and you can make uh, relevant and, and specific to your state. So I have a, a box here that's from uh, the Washington WAP uh, website. They are really doing a lot with the Weather Vision Plus Health, and, and, you know, I know that some states are further along in these efforts than others, but uh, reach out to your, your state health departments, your local health departments. You can get a lot of that good data on asthma rates and hospitalization rates. Uh, it can really make a compelling case for why weatherization um, is, you know, worthwhile and necessary and needed because of its health impact. Um, and also really a way to further those uh, weatherization plus health efforts in your state. Um, that this comes from a, a paper on the health benefits of residential energy efficiency from a, a think tank group called E for the Future. They have these really good flow charts. Um, you know, look at this line on here. These are measures that we can weatherization, and then what the impact of that is, and then what, what the health outcome of that is. And um, things like this are really good to show to policymakers, show to uh, groups in the community uh, that you can really get a case for, um, you know, physician and whether it's physician plus health. And uh, if anyone's been watching news, anything, uh, reading news, healthcare is a huge, a huge focus right now. So uh, being able to be a part of that debate of uh, lowering healthcare costs and making uh, our citizens healthier is, is really a strength. Um, next. We have uh, working on reducing energy waste. So as I mentioned, there's, there's a lot of different ways to kind of talk about 
that real part of WAP, which is the energy. So you talk about conserving energy, but you can also talk about reducing waste, energy optimization, um, reducing the energy burden, uh, and then, then really noting that, that it's not just uh, energy savings in the, in, in the pockets of, um, you know, the, the thing that's been weatherized. That's certainly an important, important benefit, but uh, society as a whole gets benefits from, uh, say, from energy efficiency and saved energy. So, um, see some really good statistics on there. Again, there is a lot of resources out there. Um, and we'll uh, can keep you updated with those as they come out. They're in our NAP e news. Um, and anytime anyone needs any sort of this data, uh, NAPCAP can really be a resource for that. Okay, so, housing is infrastructure. So, infrastructure is and will continue to be a hot topic um, in the political landscape, in, uh, you know, just kind of. Uh, so you're always going to be hearing about infrastructure going forward uh, because it is a priority of, of administration. It's a priority of a lot of people in Congress. So, but infrastructure, it's important to keep in mind, is more than just bridges, bridges and roads. Um, as soon as you you look at kind of our housing stock and um, how how old it is, um, you know, looking at the houses that we weatherize. If they're built before 1980, as, as kind of the stats show, two thirds of, of homes are. Um, energy efficiency really wasn't even a concept before 1980. So there's really a, a kind of a compelling case there for weatherization to bring these homes up to date uh, with modern energy efficiency improvements. Um, and you know, especially as you look at renewables, um, more and more housing. Uh, homes including solar panels, uh, home really part of the electric grid. So as as uh, you know, members of Congress want to modernize our electric grid. When a home is contributing to that grid, putting power onto that grid, or alternatively, uh, because it's very inefficient, sucking a lot off of that grid, um, it's really good to make the case that uh, our housing infrastructure is just as, as integral as bridges and roads, and what you traditionally think of as infrastructure. Um, also, the idea that WAP helps all Americans. So, uh, anyone over the you know the past year knows that it's been a resounding frame, resounding theme of uh, forgotten pe uh, communities, forgotten voters in rural areas, flyover country. Uh, but what is really what I'm excited about WAP is that it's not just uh, some elite program. It is really helping people that are in need, and, you know, WAP touches every part of our states, right? Um, it's in urban areas, it's in rural areas. I, I pulled this map from uh, Missouri's WAP, and I thought it was a really good illustration of, um, you know, the 114 counties in Missouri, all covered by uh, WAP agencies, and you can see the territories there and the counties broken up, um, you know, we're being able to emphasize that WAP is playing a crucial need for everyone in your state. It's not just uh, a small subset of, of people. And, um, and finally, you know, thinking about the right tied in with urban and rural is the idea that, that single family, multifamily, and mobile homes were in all, all types of homes. Um, you know, uh, another fun thing to kind of think about in terms of framing and messaging is consider audience, right? Um, kind of how you message around WAP, what frames you use, depends on who you're talking to. So, um, you, if you're talking to leaders and decision makers, you might want to emphasize, uh, you know, themes that way. You might want to emphasize something, uh, something to, to get partner organizations to work with you. And then you, of course, know your state and your clients best and, and the messages that might resonate most with them to get them to sign up for weatherization. So that's kind of the three audiences to think about is decision makers, policy makers, partner organizations, and then uh, potential clients in need of weatherization. Uh, really quickly, I want to round out the conversation about framing, about uh, combating some common negative frames, right? So. Uh, it's really uh, easy to pick out in the in the landscape, the communication landscape, some some potential attacks or negative frames against WAP. So, um, 
So we would bring that up and, and discuss that. So, um, you know, WAP is government waste. So you could say here people talk about WAP as just a big government program uh, trying to throw money at a problem. Um, you know, these are some, some kind of good ways to combat that frame. Just talking about how efficient federal programs, um, you know, when you talk about for every DOE dollar put into the program, there are uh, other dollars from other federal sources, from state sources, from private sources that are leveraged to go along with that. Um, and, you know, as all of you are familiar with, we have very high quality control standards and rules of how money is spent. Um, it's not, not a free for all giveaway type of program, um, as all of you are very familiar with. Uh, as state manager. Uh, a similar frame, WAP as a handout that it's uh, you know can be lumped in with any social program, any social services program. Um, you know, WAP, as, uh, you know, it's different than a lot of other social programs because it is an investment and it uh, is an impact that lasts for decades. Um, you know, most of the the WAP evaluations show that that these uh, energy efficiency improvements to bring savings 20 years later. Uh, so that kind of sets WAP apart. Uh, additionally, you know, uh, the job creation and training opportunities that are part of WAP is, uh, you know, really a key feature as well. Because, um, you know, in general, the idea of job training is a very, very popular across all systems. Uh, is a very popular communication frame using job training and giving people skills um, is a very sellable feature. And then some folks might say that WAP is unnecessary, that it's not the government's business to be retrofitting homes, that there's really not a need for it. Uh, but at, you know, we were talking about earlier the amount of housing stock that is old, that's pre-1980. Um, you know, every year DOE estimates it's, you know, maybe 30 million folks qualify for the program, and it doesn't really go down because um, one's age. And uh, we normally address the fact of that need. The need is great. Um, so, but that it's necessary um, is is something that we can really um, come back at and, and have a strong message to back up. So we're going to just go a little bit um, – to more in depth into the economic impact of WAP because that's something that uh, you know has really gotten a lot of attention. Um, the economy and uh, America's American businesses has been uh, a communication theme across the, across the board for the past year, um, and will continue to be. So, looking at how WAP impacts American workers and American businesses uh, will be a strength, especially. Um, at level and at the local level, which we're going to talk about. Um, you know, so there's a lot of good data, kind of looking from a thousand feet, looking nationally at the program. Uh, many jobs were supported a year. Uh, many jobs were supported um, and created WAP under the Recovery Act when there was some more funding. Uh, some some good data in terms of how many materials are used um, that are made in America. This um, this kind of argument makes <coughs> excuse me. Um, we're talking at the local level, right? We know policymakers want to know like their district and their community. Um, so what we have to do as NASCAS is put the states to put out <coughs> excuse me. Um, state-specific fact sheets to show the impact of specifically in your state, how many jobs um, it supports, how many types of businesses it's uh, supporting through purchase of materials. So we're going to work with all of your states um, to, um, to to put out this material, right? We're going to need the data from you. Um, so the Um, is this type of resource, the fact sheet, will uh, be a good resource to give to policymakers. 
have events, teams with social media, and break down into smaller posts social media. Um, and we're going to be continuing to work with this over the next uh, couple months. Um, you know, with data like this, if you're willing to work and reach out to your sub grantees, we're really willing to help put that together and present it in a visual way. Um, so we're going to send out to you um, <coughs> a it'll be either in a link form, um, there'll be a link form, we'll to reach out to your um, I'm gonna. I'm having a coughing attack right now. Um, I'm gonna pause really quick and ask. Uh, we stop questions. If anyone has questions right now? Okay. So, um, you know, as you can see here, we want to reach out to sub grantees and find out how many people their agencies are employing on their crews. Um, we want to know how many people are contracting with. We want to know <coughs> uh, what business they support. So that's going to be an upcoming project that we want to work with all of you on so that we can provide that resource to you. Moving on to success stories. Um, before we move on, are there any questions really quick on those frames or messaging? I did have a question come through on the, the chat. Uh, they want to know if the PowerPoint will be available after the webinar. Um, so we'll um, be to PowerPoint available. We'll have a recording as well as uh, the actual slides as well. Um, I'm going to unmute people, realizing that folks are commuted here. Okay, you all should be unmuted now, and if anyone has a question before I move on. This is Kathy Andrews from the state of California, and I was just wondering um, on the fact sheets or the data that you're wanting to collect concerning employment, do you that being um, a new reporting requirement under DOE, or is this going to be an annual event, or what, what do you vision as far as, far as data collection with respect to the employment? So, um, what this is going to be is a, um, it's going to be through DOE. This is going to be through NASCAP. Um, it's not going to be a reporting requirement. We're going to reach out to you folks, um, and if you're able to provide us the uh, data for local agencies, we're going to incorporate that to the track sheet. Um, we do the, um, we do the uh, annual funding survey every year, um, and we'll uh, incorporate that into the fact sheet as well, but it's not going to be any sort of new material requirement. Okay, thank you. Uh, if everyone could mute their phones um, so that we can cut down from the background noise and we'll move on. Okay. Um, the first part, we're going to work on choosing success stories. So, um, what you want to think about is how to pick your success story. Um, you want to choose stories that illustrate the frames that we talked about and focus on the um, values and goals of WAP, right? And we want to focus on issues, working families, 
um, you know, really thinking strategically before you put that story together um, is, is really going to be helpful. Um, so here are some, some suggested diff different purposes. Um, if, um, you know, you want to elaborate on strengths of WAP, you can raise awareness of different aspects of the program, uh, the training, the jobs, um, and, you know, describing innovative programs, we're going to, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Um, have a purpose in mind when you're um, when you're uh, going about crafting the story. Um, and so, um, step two, to think about the beginning is really important. Um, when we have a success story, um, people categorize it right away. So based on the title, based on kind of the first, um, <coughs> the first lines, you uh, don't want someone to immediately dismiss your story. So you demonstrate that, that um, it has a wide impact. You want to demonstrate that um, you know, you're solving a broad-based problem. Um, and that it is something that affects your state and your community and, and the as a whole. Uh, so we want to work on um, going forward a couple of targeted uh, success story campaigns. Um, so uh, we want to work with you to really increase <coughs> some public information around um, uh, WAF success stories, and we're going to do it by kind of channeling it uh, through these three campaigns. So the third one is phases of WAF, and these are going to be the client stories. So um, right here you can see six kind of key to the client story. Uh, this is a blog post we did on Weatherization Day. This is a client from Washington State. Um, we want to show that there's a, a really good hook at the beginning in the title. Um, in this case, we used a quote and really about the best way to catch people's attention. Um, you know, we're on background of the family and, or the client, um, describe the home, what it was like, the conditions, then um, having the measures that were done, the crews, um, and then find what the impact uh, was made on the family. Um, in this case, uh, the client is still connected to her community action agency. She started volunteering and really helping out um, at her community action agency as a result of the uh, work that was done in her home. The integral step is that photo. Um, in today's communication landscape, if you have a success story or a letter of appreciation or something like that, and there's not a visual component, I say that it's endless, but you need a visual component like a photo um, for it to stand out in, in kind of the, the today's communication landscape. Um, so the, the other kind of campaign is going to be the hashtag uh, WXJobs, weatherization jobs, um, to really highlight the people that are on the ground, hardworking, um, you know, running this program. Uh, be that to the state, folks to the crew, uh, contractors, intake folks, be creative about how you do it. Um, or to highlight that. <laughs> this is a post we did about um, a weather edition practitioner in uh, Indiana. Uh, we really focused, uh, we had a, a YouTube video. Um, and this was an, an in memoriam blog post because he sadly. Uh, um, pass away, but it was a very this blog post. Um, it was a, a, a great tribute to him, but also highlighted the dedicated workforce that we have. Um, so, kind of that in mind, there are well, you know, kind of kind of key parts to think about. Um, you know, again, that hook, a title or heading, um, background on the web professional, how they got into the field, um, description of what they do on a day to day basis, their training, their skills. What is meaningful to them and connecting to that mission of the program, and again, photo or video. So, uh, uh, on the screen here, uh, another success story done by E for the Future. They're another um, group. It's a very small social media post, but it's effective. It's you know, and, and a short 
a couple quotes. And having something like this, um, there's a really good demonstration uh, to policymakers that, you know, have a very highly trained, dedicated workforce of many of the programs. Um, the hashtag that everyone kind of knows, uh, weatherization works, that's kind of been the mod and the standby of the program, and we um, definitely keep that going. Um, we kind of use that uh, going forward to highlight innovative programs. So, um, got there uh, the blog we did about weatherization plus health in Washington. Um, you know, that's an innovative program that people have all heard about, but there are other ones, other things that you were doing in your state that are innovative. You, know, you we will share those and, and other states want to hear about those in addition to um, you know policymakers and, and people of that nature. So um, uh chatting with a hook, uh, a problem or issue and then what your native program or solution is doing to solve that. Um, discussing the results so far, giving some sources of how maybe another state can implement that program. And then who who at the the state or the local agency contacted to learn more, uh, and then really including a photo or video. So um, okay. Uh, before we hit this slide, are there any questions? Um, so it should be unmuted. Um, does anyone have any questions? We will move on. Um, I just wanted to highlight here, uh, D does have communications resources as well. Uh, there's the ERE blog, ERE success stories. Uh, that's Office of Energy Efficiency Renewable Energy. Um, <coughs> there's a hard working communications team at DOE. And, um, definitely sign up for those uh, updates in your email uh, because they have some very good Slides um, on on app, um, other just general energy efficiency uh, programs. Um, want to move on to a discussion about social media. Um, so I'm aware that uh, a lot of state offices don't have their own social media. They have to do it through marketing communications, or they have to. Um, the rules are such that they can't have a lab specific social media account, um, or your larger department can't be, you know, constantly one program like WAP. However, um, we do want uh, to help set you up for success on social media. So if you don't have social media yet and you want to, um, learn strategies and things like that. Um, we are willing to work with you and do a dedicated training on that. But kind of one of the best solutions is to <coughs> have those success rates gather information and share them with us, and we can elevate them um, on our social media and widely. Um, here is a link to um, our our media toolkits from Weatherization Day. Um, from Energy Action Months, which a lot of you are familiar with. Um, they're very easy to repurpose, and um, a lot of the, the posts there are, are very good at all times of the year because, you know, communicating on weatherization shouldn't just be once a year on weatherization day. It should be all the time. Um, uh, you know, really, really you can underestimate uh, the you know, connection and reach of social media. Um, it, it is something that if you're not doing it, we want to help you do. Um, easy thing for folks, um, if you're on social media or if you have to work with kind of um, a mining office, is, um, a lot of folks, you know, they don't have the time because they should be sitting on social media all day, they're in the, the WAP program. Um, there are platforms, Hootsuite and TweetDeck are, are the most um, well known, where you can essentially schedule all of your social media ahead of time. So you could sit down for an hour and you can have 
the and, and and facts or anything that you want to put up in there um, ahead of time. Set up, pick the time, and it'll automatically post throughout the week whenever you had scheduled it to. So that's a really good tool to use. Um, so also is a very uh, highly recommended media. Um, it can seem overwhelming to you know um, keep track of what am I doing on Facebook, what am I doing on Twitter, or these various platforms. Um, it really works. You can see there on the screen to get a uh, timeline and say you know what type of post you're doing when what topic is, and then that way you kind of have an idea, and you can really um, copy and paste into, uh, you know, the social media just straight from your spreadsheet. And it's also something that you can pass on to uh, agencies. These are pre-made tweets that they can do on, on their own social media. You can pass along your spreadsheet to um, a marketing office to help guide their communications efforts as well. Okay, um, talk a little bit about photos. Um, because I said, uh, photos, a visual component is very uh, key in this communication landscape. Um, something that a lot of people don't know is where to find unsensed to stock photos. If you're doing a newsletter or you're trying to make a social media post, a really good resource is to search the Creative Commons. So what this is, is it's a search engine that integrates a lot of different uh, websites. When you search, for example, if you were to search um, a house, right, to include in a newsletter about weatherization, um, if you type it into here, all the results you're going to get are photos that are unlicensed, so they're free to use, free to reproduce. Um, because a lot of times uh, folks are worried that the picture has a copyright on it or um, you don't necessarily have the right to use it. If you're going through a resource like this, Creative Commons, um, it's free and it is licensed and you're free to use it um, and reproduce it and modify it. Um, so we want people to, to, to know that that's a resource that's out there. Um, Aligned if you're using a Another platform like MailChimp or Constant Contact, or you go on to some, some graphic design type sites like Canva, um, you're familiar with any of these, they have images for you, but sometimes you have to pay um, $3, and um, that's not something that's you know, easy to do or justify. So we want to make sure that you're utilizing uh, your resources that are out there. Um, if people could mute their phones, that would be great so that we can cut down a little bit of the background noise. Thank you. Okay, I'm just going to kind of look at um, some bits here uh, because a lot of the best photos that you get are ones that are to events taken by your local agency. Uh, we want to kind of just have <laughs> question here about what those are kind of more effective than others. Um, so we have a uh, left okay photo, and then on the right, a better photo, right? So um, on the left, we have what we think is a crew, a weatherization crew person. Um, but you know for sure. What agency is he from? Is he client? You don't really know. Um, photos work best when there is an action, right? So it's a little there on the right. Uh, we show uh, weatherization contractor are doing some weather stripping, actually doing some weather uh, weatherization measures. Um, so that's a slightly better choice. Um, we're doing a success story. Um, if I were to do a success story uh, about you know, this weatherization provider, I would almost include both. You know, we have one uh, showing his face that that you can, can see, uh, you know, and and get to know him, and then you also see him in action uh, working on on the house. So uh, that's something to think about. Uh, again, this is uh, pictures of, of uh, WAP demonstrations with policymakers, right? So this is an okay picture, you know, everyone's standing around, but um, on the right there's an action. You actually see uh, a 
and character and showing the uh, policymaker there and and sharing uh, how to how to blow insulation to the side of that house. Um, another uh, thing to emphasize, you know, weatherization uses really cutting edge technology to get the energy savings, right? Um, a flow just so like there on the left is going to be the most effective, but a photo of uh, one of our, our dedicated workers um, using it, um, uh, using that technology uh, will be more effective. Is uh, training. Uh, so on the left, you just got some folks looking at computers, but on the right, it is much more powerful. Um, you can get a, a much richer story out of that. Uh, you can clearly see uh, the thing that's going on there. Our uh, some clients, uh, you know, on the left is a real. It's a good photo. You get to see the family. Um, it's a photo by any means, but on the right, um, also more effective. The client education there. Uh, you see. The crew member uh, speaking with the client, showing them an energy bill, um, and it really lends more to the success story. Um, so we go on uh, to the next kind of little section. Um, I want to give an opportunity and uh, want to talk about kind of uh, some success stories that they've been working on or, or efforts that they've been doing. Um, like this. So we will move on. Um, I will talk a little bit about infographics. So, um, infographics are kind of a newer uh, graphic in communications. Uh, you know, a, a few years ago when we were doing these presentations, infographics weren't as big of a, a, a trend, let's say. Um, but they are very powerful for storytelling use. Um, they ask essentials and um, you know, but they require a hook, right? They require data. Um, I'm about to show you some examples of infographics um, in case you're familiar, but I want you to know that if you provide us with that data, with that hook, we can build it for you. We can um, help build infographics for you that we share, that you can share. Um, think about what reports and data you already have that we know one's looking at that you can showcase in a creative way. Um, I think that I know that Texas, Delaware, a couple different states have to do uh, reports on their weatherization program that go to Congress, or not to Congress, to their state legislature. Um, there's a lot of good data and state-specific facts in those, um, but they are just a, a Word document, um, and you would expect that Many people uh, read those as, as could read them, or that would get that information if we present it in a more creative way. These are the graphics that we put together um, around Weatherization Day, uh, you know, with, with different facts on them. And, and um, you, you may have seen these, they were in our toolkit. Um, <coughs> we would make a specific uh, infographic for you. So if you can provide with uh, with data, um, we want to build that and work with you so that you're able to have these materials that can be shared on social media and um, newsletters and and uh, really use those to highlight your program. Um, an example of a state-specific infographic: the state of Utah put this together for uh, Weatherization Day for the 40th anniversary. Um, there, it's it's very compelling. It tells a lot and not a lot of. of um, and yeah, as anyone who scrolls through a social media feed will know, uh, something like this catches your eye, 
and look on it and, and see more, uh, whereas, you know, just a traditional rapport or something like that uh, doesn't catch as, 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 as much attention. So, okay. Um, if we open the floor for questions and discussion, um, you know, I want to talk, uh, just remind everyone that NASCAS is your resource. So, um, one of our, you know, key roles is being able to highlight and communicate around the WAP and empowering the states to do that as well. So, please, please reach out to us. Again, it, WAP communication is in every effort. Um, it's great that every year around Weatherization Day, we get uh, proclamations and media articles and so media pushes, but um, can't stand up that you know, innovation is a, a, an all-year-round effort. Um, and we realize you're running uh, programs. You have a lot of other responsibilities. Uh, so we want to be able to help you with communication. So can't stress enough, reach out to us. Um, an email there. Um, I've been in contact with a lot of you via email before on regional calls, so please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, that's our blog, uh, the WAPTAC. There are a lot of public information, communications resources on WAPTAC. Um, they're a little outdated at, at this point. They're from a few years ago, um, but there is still very useful information there to help you get set up with um, social media, to craft press releases, things of that nature. Um, a lot of that information doesn't change. So, uh, and we can work with you to um, to, to help for that. So, um, and again, our Twitter and our Facebook, you have the, the ability to uh, follow us uh, using your state office's account or, or uh, whatever social media that you do have. Um, that will be a good resource to see graphics, photos, success stories, things of that nature. Uh, I want to open the floor to questions, uh, discussion. Um, anyone who's on and wants to talk about uh, things they're doing on the on the uh, education side that would be uh, useful, everyone. Would anyone like to share? Have any questions about anything that we talked about? Um, Whether be the frames we talked about earlier, um, or something more rather technical, like, like uh, how to put together success stories and social media. Right. Okay. Um, so. We will uh, be sure to uh, send out this recording and the slides so that everyone has this as a resource that you can share. Um, we also, uh, in the follow-up, will uh, kind of have some other resources for you as well. We want to, um, you know, make sure that we have an ongoing strong pipeline of success stories coming through um, going forward. So, think about. Uh, get started on that and how we can be a resource to you. And we uh, hope that you know, in the coming weeks and months, we can really uh, turn out a lot of, of biggest success stories. Um, I'd love to be able to put out a success story for every grantee over the next couple of months. That's um, a goal. So, even just being able to put out two or three for your state. Um, really go a long, long way. So, uh, anyone else has any further questions? Okay. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining on. Um, we really appreciate it. And if you uh, have any questions that didn't get addressed, please, please shoot me an email. I'd be happy to get in touch with you. Thanks.